Hello! How's it going? Welcome to the Stanley Parable. I played this before. Um, I don't know what this is going to be like, so begin the game. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day, of every month, of every year. And although others might have considered it soul rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say Hello. hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Okay. So we have one or two options here. We can either follow exactly what the story says, or we can kind of fuck around a little bit. So I'm going to fuck around a little bit. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Okay. Aw, oh, be my Valentine. Okay. So this is a little bit interesting. It's the same as last time, just a lot better. Stanley went <laughs> to every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. You're in your clothes, aren't you? Oh, in my face. I'm just a streamer's job. Oh, here we go. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Oh god, nothing's open, is it? Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. Ah, oh, come on! It's really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, it's a nice beautifully room. constructed room. Stanley simply stood here. Yeah, it's a, it's a really it nice room. What's your problem? Dickhead. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Nope. Nope. Stanley was so bad at following directions, <laughs> it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. Shut up. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, um, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me. Who's her? Who's her? Who's her? her? This is it, Stanley. Your child chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. Okay. What the fuck? That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. Hello? Sorry to keep you waiting. 
Okay, and babe. Start bread out of the oven. All right. Okay, there we go. All right, now I want you to come in and tell me all about your day. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife? Forty-seven. They Ew. want to commit their life to you. I'm trying to make a I'm point here, Stanley. Trying to get you to see something. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. This is a very sad story about the death of death. a man named Stanley. Two, four, three. Stanley okay. is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential of his existence. No, because you're making me press buttons because... Yeah. Look at him there, pushing buttons, doing exactly what he's told to do. Now he's pushing a button. Now he's eating lunch. Fuck now you. he's going home. Now he's coming back to work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. No. La 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 Do I have to? But in his mind, ah, in his mind he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown. Fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. And so he began to fantasize about his own job. First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought excited TV. him terribly. So, he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. Okay. As he wandered through what this the fantasy fuck room, is going on, like? he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. Down one path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he called it the Ah, oh, they said the name of the game. It was such a wonderful fantasy. And so in his head, he relived it again. And then again. And again. Over and over. Wishing beyond hope that it would never end. That he might always feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path. Mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. But there is no answer. How could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets. The more he forgets which life is the real one. And I'm trying to tell him this. That in this world, he can never be anything but an observer. That as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. I'm scared. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. Yeah, fuck you. We are the K. We are the K. We are the K. Yeah. Okay. I'm like 99% sure I have to press the buttons. You see? Can he just not hear me? How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? 
I suppose I can't. Not in the way I want him to. What the fuck I is going on? Rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not, we're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time he'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again. And Stanley oh, pushed a button. Okay. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried. Okay then. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. What the fuck? Are we doing all this again? That was so weird. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Okay. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire weird. it. Wow. Yes. This room. What? But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Fuck you. Stanley was so bad at following I'm directions, jump down there. it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. I wonder if I fell. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten. What? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why, I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want, want to help you, to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. Aha! Perhaps you misunderstood. Stanley walked through the red door. Okay. I still don't think we're communicating properly. Way. Stanley walked. All right, fine, go ahead, Stanley. You want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find out what lies at the end of this Oops. road you've chosen? Well, don't let, let me stop you. You see, there's nothing here. I haven't even finished building this section of the map because you were never supposed to be here in the first place. Broken rooms, exposed developer textures. Is this what you had wanted? Was it worth ruining the entire story I had written out specifically for you? Do you not think I put a lot of time into that? Because I did. And in the end, it was all for nothing. Because this is what you wanted to see. Help me here, Stanley. Help elucidate these strange and unknowable desires of yours. What would have made this game better? What did you want to see? Vehicles? Skill trees? Work with me. You've given me absolutely nothing so far. I'll tell you what. Let me take a stab in the dark at a new design and you can give me some feedback. There we go. A third option. This already feels leaps ahead of where we were before. Go ahead, ah, Take it for a spin. Go through the left door. Okay, I'm going to stop you there. Now, tell me about your experience with this new version. Would you say that the game benefited from allowing you more choices? Feel free to be honest. I'm okay. looking for some real critical feedback here. A one? I mean, I can understand if you had reservations, you saw ways the game could be improved to more fully express itself mechanically and artistically, but a one? That's not even helpful. What am I supposed to do with that? Uh, but I guess it isn't my place to judge. Here, based on the data from your previous playthrough, I've compiled a new version. And to be perfectly candid, I think I've knocked it out of the park with this one. Let's take a look. Hi. Fuck it. 
Now, would you say that competitive leaderboard helped you feel motivated to keep walking through doors? Again, honest answers, please. Hey, I nearly forgot. I've got a prototype of a new game I've been working on, and now would be a lovely opportunity to give it some playtesting. No, I would. You no, I wouldn't mind taking, taking a look at it. Look Perfect. Let me boot it okay. up. Okay. This is interesting. In this game, the baby crawls left towards danger. You click the button to move him back to the right, and if he reaches the fire, you fail. It's a very meaningful game, all about the desperation and tedium of endlessly confronting the demands of family life. I think the art world will really take notice. But of course, the message of the game only becomes clear once you've been playing it for about four hours. So why don't you give it four hours of play to make sure it's effective? Be sure to keep notes on your experience. Okay, fuck it. You hard <laughs> bastard. Did you do it because you hate babies or purely to spite me? Because if it's the latter, well, I don't know what to do. I'm completely out of ideas. I can't think of a single thing that might improve the experience for me. I'm not even going to try. I'm out. I'm out. I'm done. It's over. Thank you for playing. Your input was extremely valuable. Oh, hey, since my game was so awful, why don't we play someone else's game? Just to ease the pain. Let's see. What do we have here? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. This seems like it'll work. Let's give it a shot. Right. I'm actually really interested where this is going because... Well, Stanley, is this any better? At last, the one thing you've always desired. A game I had absolutely yeah, nothing to do with. It's enough. But is it enough? Tell me that, Stanley. Will it ever be enough? Well, I'll say this. I'm done making things for you. From now on, I will only create to fulfill a Even greater artistic is, purpose. Shit. Watch this, Stanley. I'm going to build a house. <laughs> this will go here. No. Here and then, let's see what, what does the it fuck is going on. Yes, of course, and just to finish it all off, yes, it's complete. I made this standing. Look at it, gaze upon my work of art and feel ashamed at your own inadequacy. Ah, but you've only seen it from the outside. You've only gotten half the experience. Please, step inside and well, make yourself choice, comfortable. Isn't it grand? Isn't it perfect? It could only be better if... Wait, that's it. We must... What is going on? Out of diamond. Diamond everything. The if Minecraft parable! On, Stanley, we have to go mining. This is amazing. Oh my, it looks like it's going to get a bit dark. Have you brought a light? No. I have not brought a light. Oh, no, 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 no. This is far more open-ended than I had in mind. I'm looking for something more narrow and linear. Something that makes you feel utterly irrelevant. This won't do at all, one out of five. Even the diamonds couldn't save this one. Okay, oh. new game. Fine. Dick. I'm a dickhead. I am very impressed. Very impressed with this game. Um, I didn't think they'd actually have stuff like this in it. And I remember seeing the start of Poodle Pies video. And I was like, okay, I have to play this game. And I thought it was going to be extremely similar to the first one, but it's not. <laughs> yes, I don't even know what this game is, but I love it. You trapped in a Whirl. box with no way out. Oh. You talk. oh, it's inspired. I couldn't have done it any better myself. What is this game even supposed to be? I can't figure it out. Okay, now I'm curious. Yes, Let's yes. Go find out what the hell this is. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Oh, it's 
a puzzle. Critical thinking, Stanley. You're 40. I am so excited. Genius. I am so excited. No, actually, you know what? I think that's plenty. I really don't care much to see you stumble through anymore. What? What is going on? Okay. Just doors and doors and doors. Hey, the light at the end of the... The light at the end of the tunnel. Yay. Well, seriously, what the fuck is going on? Room number 427. I'm coming home. I'm coming home. Tell the world I'm coming home. Let the rain wash away. All the pain of 427. I wonder what he found. If what he wanted was to be the leading man in his own story, well, perhaps he's gotten it. Down in wherever he is right now. I wonder if he's happy with his choice. And if he's learned the heavy cost that comes with it. He'll understand soon what I was trying to tell him. He needs me. Someone who will wrap everything up at the end. To make sense out of the chaos and the fear and the confusion. That's who I am. That is what I mean to this world. Oh, yes. Yes, I'll be back. There's no other way. Once this ends, after it all comes to a close, then I'll be back. The end will be here soon. Very soon. I can wait. I can't. I'm not patient enough. Never the end is loading. The end is never loading. The never is end. All of his co-workers were gone. Oh what my could God. it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Dear God, go fuck yourself. When Stanley came to a set of two open, this was not the correct way to the meeting room. And Stanley my head knew it hurts. perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. The lounge was sublime, a work of art. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Fuck you. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. But in his eagerness to prove that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley leapt from the platform and plunged to his death. Good job, Stanley. Everyone thinks you're Should have landed on the powerful. boxes, man. If anybody landed on the boxes from that height, they wouldn't die. We Wait, Stanley thought to himself. Am I sure that the orders stopped coming in? How is that possible? Or they never stopped. Surely I was mistaken. No. No, the orders were still missing. For now. Alrighty then. Sorry folks, the first door is up. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not Fuck the correct you. way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Is. Standing now in this incredible room, Stanley for the first time, but eager to get back to business, oh my Stanley God, took the first off. open door on his left. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Oh well, look who's got cold feet. Sorry to break it to you, Stanley, but that lift isn't coming back. You'd best either get comfortable right here on this platform, or test your luck by jumping to the floor below. You know what? 
Looking at it now, it's not that far to the bottom floor. I bet you can make it. But if I land on the boxes. Boxes! I land on the boxes! Whoops! Looks like I was wrong. How clumsy of me. God, what a dick. I'm going to do the entire Stanley Parable. If I didn't mention that already, I'm going to do... Apparently, I can't do any more wrong way, so I have to do it the right way now. Hopefully, I might get no choice to go off. But, um, what could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Yeah, I can't, I can't take any more wrong doors or anything now. This is new. Oh, but I did every way, so it's actually making me go this way now. I was going to do it anyway, but... Okay, never when mind. Stanley came to a set of two open doors, kind of curious he entered the way door now. on oh, his God. left. Okay. Yet there was not a Shit. single person Tips for not either. getting fired. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided <laughs> to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. <laughs> Who moved my desk? Not cost. Everyone was you, you okay? Yes. Stanley stepped into the broom closet. There's a broom but here. There was nothing here, so he turned around a broom and got here. back on track. The broom's good enough. And a mop bucket. And tape. There was nothing here. No choice it's not to empty. make, no path to follow, it's not just empty. an empty broom closet. No I use reason duct tape, to use a wrench, here. use that, use that, use that, uh, uh, uh. Whee! It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Okay, well, fuck you then. But Stanley oh, yeah. just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because I'm he believed everyone home, had I'm vanished. His home. boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe. He thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out oh, of existence happened? in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Yeah, they were. were simply repeating. No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He oh my God, saw words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. Uh, my head his co workers hurts. weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and what? began to gently float above the ground. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun. What the Stanley fuck is that going on? Woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing oh my, my God. thoughts, he thought. 
And while he thought it all very odd and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. My How head. could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself? Believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility Back. for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this oh was in fact God. a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in oh control. My my head. That this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment, and my wife, and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, oh just my someone God, tell me I'm real. On. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. What the fuck? This is the story of a woman named Mary. <laughs> Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed what dead the on fuck? the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how I am she normal, I am okay. Normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day the very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career and by extension the rest of her life she had no time for this so it was only a moment that she stood there staring down at the body and then she turned and ran the end is never the end wow all of his co-workers were Whoa, gone. my head hurts so mean? much. Stanley decided to go to the so meeting room. Perhaps much. he had simply missed a memo. So freaking much. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he oh entered the God. door on his left. What the fuck just happened? What the fuck? Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Hoping coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Okay. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked. Unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated oh, my this. Head. What dark secret was being held from him? What, what he could not have known now? was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. 2845. 
but of course, yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Okay then. What the fuck? Okay, nothing here. Okay, time to go down, guys. This game would be so much better if you were able to jump. Oh my god. So much better. So much better. So. How's it going? Oh, that's good. good. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt Did a he? bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Well, I guess another place you can go wrong. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would um, meet his um, final um, death. Um. I know. Any mini mini mo, cause if I have a tower with a squeeze, let it go. Any mini mini mo, fuck. Okay, we're gonna die, guys. The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. Uh, look. Any me money more? Catch a figure by the tail. If screws let it go. Any me money more? Well, if I do it like any me money more? Catch a figure by the tail. If screws let it go. Any me money more? Oh, I was expecting the, a, a splash there. I guess. What's nice? There we go. Like a whip. As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, he reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, oh. trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plugging the eyeballs from a blind man. And so he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. There was Stanley. Oh my god. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as what? alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator what think he was going, going to accomplish? When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? Wow. Wow, that's unreal. What the fuck?
That's so cool. But what the fuck's going on? Like, wow. Well done, guys. Well, the freaking done. This game was unbelievable. The war zone? What? This is unbelievable. Onto what? Oh, fuck you. Okay. Wow. This game is unbelievable. These were the office designs, were, were they? They're all the same. Okay, time to go here. Wow. <laughs> oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. Off. Can you see? Can you see I can. how much I they can need see. one another? No, perhaps not. Sometimes well, these do. things cannot be seen. But listen to me. You can still save these two. You can stop the program okay. before they both fail. Push escape and press quick. No! To beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking no. to the answers. No! Ah! Stop now. Only true Damn it. Choice. Damn it. You do, choose it. Don't Damn it. Let time choose. Fuck. For you. Don't let time. Oh, I'm back at the beginning. Wait. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Why? Yet going there was on? not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief. Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered aloud to nobody. He began wildly tearing through papers on the boss's desk pulling books off the shelf, looking behind paintings, desperate for clues to his situation. But his attention was caught by a keypad Come behind on, the me. boss's desk. What could its purpose be? In fact, this keypad guarded the terrible secret that lay buried below his feet. And so the boss had a... Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. That kind of anxiety isn't healthy, so he relaxed for a few moments with some calming New Age music. Fuck you, though. Feeling soothed and rejuvenated, Stanley calmly walked forward in, into the opened passageway. 
Okay. God, so I do everything right this time. Well, I can do everything like I can do the same as last time. But when uh, when I died, if I left it, I don't know what would have happened. But wait, we're, we're, we're going to do the other ending. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read "Mind Control Facility." Although this passageway Actually, had the no. word escape written on it, the truth endings. was that at the end of this hawk, but of course, Stanley thought better of it and realized he simply had too much to live for. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold, Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? them what the fuck's going on now the monitors jump to life their true nature revealed each bore the number of an employee in the building Stanley's co-workers the We're lives of so many individuals about... reduced to images on a screen and Stanley one of them eternally Someone's monitored in here. this place where freedom meant nothing Okay then. My head hurts. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Oh, never. Hey, hey, it's scary. It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy, or sad, or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this jump very that. place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Big red button, not doing anything. As if I step in this. Nothing, okay. Let's see. One for one. I don't even know if this does anything. I'm sure we'll see, won't we? We'll see. I'm really confused, but four. Where's five? I'm sure it's a run in this game. It makes it so much better. And jump. Did all of them. My God. And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation oh to God. put an end to this horrible place. I know I want to do every ending, 
but like oh, fuck I don't want to play like even to get here to where I am right now it takes about 10 minutes 15 minutes probably so like I don't want to waste another 10 15 minutes getting back here just to press on or off so I'm simply just gonna spin around the circles everyone I look at is Closer to off. Did the game break? Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? He had won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's oh, command. So, so. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles oh, still lay you. unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, oh, he realized sky. none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Wow. The end is never the end. Fuck it. Last time. Very last time. The meeting room. Yes, that's where everyone would be. Stanley just needed to get to the meeting room, and from then on, he would never be okay, alone. Okay, so we're just gonna do this again. compress on this time. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door okay. on his left. Yet, there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Gonna fuck shit up. Man. Okay, I think we all know the drill by now. Blah, blah, blah. Dark secrets, the keypad. Stanley pushes some buttons. Oh, <laughs> look, it's a new passageway. I, knew, I actually breathes. knew the code that time. It was 2A45. Yeah, we're going down. We're going down. Yeah, we're going down. Down. Going over me. Yeah, we are. Oh, now, now we're going down. Oh God. Blah 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 blah. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Action take the long to get here. Just waiting through all the dialogue to see anything. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Swag, swag, swig, swag. His name is Stanley and he has swaggy swag. Now the monitors jumped to life. Swiggy Stanley, his name is Stanley. Each bore the number of an employee in the building. Stanley's co-workers. Lives of so many individuals reduced Eww, to images on a screen. Care. And Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. 
This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe it couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated yes. to accept it blindly? No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control. Never. Never. It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Oh my God. Was it even possible? <sighs> Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over an... Oh, Stanley, and you didn't just activate the controls, did you? After they kept you enslaved all these years, you go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself. Is that what you wanted? Control? I want control. Oh, Stanley, I applaud your effort, I really do. But you need to understand, there's only so much that machine can do. You were supposed to let it go, turn the controls off, and leave. If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do much better than that. I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you do. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, nuclear detonators are set to explode, oh. eliminating the entire complex. How long until detonation then? Hmm, let's say, um, two minutes. Ah, now this is me. This thing's a little more fun, isn't it, Stanley? It's your time to shine. You are the star. It's your story now. we gotta now. fuck shit Shape up. it to your heart's desires. Oh, this is much better than what I had in mind. What a shame we have so little time left to enjoy it. Mere moments until the bomb goes off. But what precious moments each one of them is. More time to talk about you, about me, where we're going, what all this means. I barely know where to start. What's that? You'd like to know where your co-workers are. A moment of solace before you're obliterated. All right, I'm in a good mood. You're going to die anyway. I'll tell you okay, exactly okay. what happened to them. I erased them. I turned off the machine. I set you free. Of course, that was merely in this instance of the story. Sometimes when I tell it, I simply let you sit there in your office forever, pushing buttons endlessly and then okay, dying okay, okay. alone. Other times, I let the office sink into the ground, swallowing everyone inside, or I let it burn to a crisp. I have to say this, though. This version of events has been rather amusing. Watching you try to make sense of everything and take back the control wrested away from you, it's quite rich. I almost hate to see it go. But I'm sure whatever I come up with on the next go-around will be even better. My goodness, only 34 seconds left. But I'm enjoying this so much. You know what? To hell with it. I'm oh going God, to put oh some God. extra what, time on the clock. Close, 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 close. These are precious additional seconds, Stanley. Time doesn't grow on trees. Oh dear me, what's the matter, Stanley? Is it that you have no idea where you're going or what yeah. you're supposed to be doing right now? Or did you just assume when you saw that timer that something in this room was capable of turning it off? I mean, look at you. Running from button to button, screen to screen, clicking on every little thing in this room. These numbered buttons, no, these colored ones, or maybe this big red button, or this door. Everything, anything, something here will save me. Why would you think that, Stanley? That this video what game can be fun ah. solved? Do you have any idea what your purpose in this place is? <laughs> fuck, 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 fuck. Stanley. You're in for quite a disappointment, but here's a spoiler for you. That timer isn't a catalyst to keep the action moving along. It's just seconds ticking away to your death. You're only still playing instead of watching a cutscene because I want to watch you for every moment that you're powerless. To see you made humble. This is not a challenge, it's a tragedy. You wanted to control this world, that's fine. 
but I'm going to destroy it first, so you can't. Ah, uh, take a look uh, at the clock, uh, Stanley. That's 30 seconds you have left to struggle. 30 seconds until a big boom and then nothing. No ending here, just you being blown to pieces. Will you cling desperately to your frail life, or will you let it go peacefully? I don't know. Choice. Make it count, or don't. It's all the same to me, all a part of the joke. And believe me, I will be laughing at every second of your inevitable life from the moment we fade in until the moment I say, happily ever up. Ah! Uh. Fuck! <sighs> oh my god. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting. There's only one Perhaps ending left. Simply missed a memo. I didn't do, and I know for a fact. And that one is the one when I die. He's like, press escape now and press quit. Um, that's the only one that I didn't do. I did, I did, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't uh, die. When Stanley came to a I set quit of when two I died. open doors. I mean, worked, he so. entered the door on his left. No one's here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yet there was not a single uh. person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Hoping coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Yeah, yeah, key code. Yeah, yeah, two, eight, four, five. Here's the door. Just go. Oh, God. Oh, my head hurts so much. It's just scam. It's just a total mind fuck. Putting another mind fuck. Putting another mind fuck. Putting another mind fuck. Putting another mind fuck. Jesus Christ! Like. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read "Mind Control Facility." Although this passageway had the word "escape" written on it. The truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. The door is not, yeah. The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. Loading screens, yeah! Wee! Loading screens, yay! As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, he reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plucking the eyeballs from a blind man. And so he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. Farewell, Stanley. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his We've body, already been here. killing him instantly. Been here, don't do it. Been here, don't do it. Been here, don't do it. And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? Beautiful game, we're already here. When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead yeah. from the moment he hit start? But we see that he can also be alive, so what's your point? <laughs> I 
Oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish uh... to control one another. How they both wish to be free. Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. But listen to me. You can still save these two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no Phone. way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let time Now we're gonna see what happens. Nothing. Is that it? Oh, guys, we died. Um, that's the Stanley Parable. It's been like an hour and like five minutes or something, and I'm really tired now just by doing this. So yeah, hit the like button, subscribe button, everybody you possibly can, and uh, appreciate the long uploading video because usually like in one night it takes like two and a half to maybe even five hours to upload a video sometimes, six hours for 20 minute ones. So this one's going to take literally about 18 hours or something, well that's kind of an exaggeration, I'll guess about 14 hours, um, so yeah, bye!